everybody, whoever's out there today. Lovely to see you. It's a nice snowy day here in Berlin. And um, I'm very, very honored and happy to have Dinka Michik. How do you pronounce it? Vladkovich, I know, of course. It's Migic. It's Migic. Migic. Sorry, I should have asked that before. Vladkovic is no problem for us horn players. I know. But we are so happy to have her here today. Um, Dinka is a, well, therapist is too much of a heavy word for me. I'd say um, you're a, you, you train, you, you're a mental trainer for, for performers. Um, how would you describe yourself? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I don't like a psychotherapist word as well <laughs> because it's too heavy, as you say. Uh, it's more a mental training or a mental coach, uh, what I would say. Mm -hmm. Well, we are so happy to have you here. Welcome to the Horn Hangouts. Um, you have another reason for being here because your husband is Radovan Vladkovic, who we all know and adore. And uh, hi to Radovan if you're watching. Is he watching? I guess so, yes. <laughs> Radovan's in, pa uh, where is he? In Naples? Palermo, Palermo. In Sicily. Yeah. Palermo. Hello, Radovan. Hope you have a great concert tonight. <laughs> So, Dinka, you've come on uh, to talk to us about how to tackle performance anxiety because I, I teach all around the world and everybody always wants to know um, uh, how can I combat stage fright. People don't usually believe that because we're in the Berlin Phil, um, they think they think we don't have stage fright once you get a job and once you're you know you're on that. Everybody gets stage fright, right? Everybody's scared at For some sure. point. Yeah. And it is good so. It is good so. <laughs> so. Tell us, why do we get nervous before we play? Well, this is something actually, uh, mostly people think it's because I'm not good enough or I'm not prepared enough, and that's wrong. That's the first wrong thought about it. Uh, it's something we have in our subconscious for thousands of years. It's the reaction our body has on a, let's say, dangerous situation. So, you know, we were hunters before, so our ancestors uh, had this, you know, danger around them. And our body learned how to react on a danger, and the reaction is fight or flight. So the body prepares for this. Unfortunately, <laughs> our uh, subconscious uh, has a huge file of like 60,000 years of experience, and uh, subconscious has no intelligence of its own. So <laughs> it means it doesn't make any difference between audience or a gang of hungry tigers, let's say. It's and about the same thing sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so the, re the reaction of our body is the same. And the reaction uh, actually uh, enables us to you know, to be fast, to focus, to run fast or to fight very heavy and things like that. And this is actually the direction that you experience when you are on a stage. So this is the heartbeat, sweating of the uh, hands, uh, mind goes blank, <laughs> blank and, and, you know, things like that. It seems to hit everybody exact where, exactly where they can't they, they they don't need it it seems it hits horn players here it hits strings here it hits yeah. a whole where we, we can lose use at least that's it because you you actually trying to fight the stage fright you focus on the things that you need so you know the horn players need their muscles uh, uh, here facial uh, muscles string players need their fingers and Unfortunately, this is the then the place where you feel that your your especially breathing for the horn players. It's a difficulty. You know your your uh, uh, breath is short uh, when when you feel this fear. So these are all actually just the symptoms. Why why should we why do we feel fear? What what makes us feel the fear? Some people, um, no names, but I play with quite a few of them, seem to go out there and just just do it. Um, does everybody feel a sort of fear, or do you think some people can hide it better than others? Yeah, they do. They do on a on a different level for sure, and it depends a lot of their uh, let's say life experience on stage. And um, as I told you a day before, uh, uh, your first uh, stage experience is when you started to walk. And uh, you, you 
could have a parents who are very relaxed about it when you fall down and say, okay, come on, get up and go on. And you can have also the parents who are very anxious and, and say, oh, no, do it, don't go, you know. So this is your first experience and uh, it stays. So this is also, you know, and also your first teacher, did he, you know, take your first performances as a game or as a very serious matter that you, you know, have to really, you know, do seriously and with a lot of uh, excitement and things like that. So all these experiences are very important how a certain person reacts on a stage. And uh, there are also different reactions. Uh, it's also the time of the reaction, you know. There are some people who are nervous before the performance, but on the stage they are very relaxed. They concentrate and they can be relaxed. Some of them only on a stage. This is the worst part, <laughs> the worst thing. Uh, there are people who, uh, who feel this stage fright or this nervousness and symptoms after the performance. And you would say, oh, it's great, it doesn't matter. But it does matter Ooh, because who that? after the performance, I'd like to. Oh <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. There are people who really throw up, you know, after the performance, or had terrible headaches uh, after the performance. But the thing is, even they suffer a lot because you know they know what happens after the performance. So this this uh, nervousness then you know spread also on before, during the performance, and after the performance. So. Uh, Everybody has a different reactions, but the reaction is surely there. <laughs> so you, you don't avoid it. And it's not a point to avoid it, actually. And the, the worst thing you can do is trying to avoid it or to ignore it. Because what happens is if you don't confront it and, and you don't um, analyze it, you don't do anything about it, you just think, okay, I'll ignore it. So you then, think, sorry, can I just interrupt you on that? So you're saying if I'm sitting on the stage and I'm really scared and I'm, I'm, not, supposed to, I'm not supposed to say I'm not scared, I'm fine, I'm not scared, I'm going to have to do this. So no, that, that's no. not a good thing to do, okay? This is the worst thing to do because then the next performance, your anxiety uh, level will be higher and higher because you didn't confront your, your fear actually. You know, you didn't do anything about it. You just tried to avoid it or ignore it. And then, you know, the next performance, you know it will come and you didn't do anything about it. So it makes it worse, actually. And this is mostly what people do. They try to ignore it. Of course, because we, okay. like, we don't like to confront nasty things in life and stage fright seems to be really... Yeah. I mean, it is something really quite nasty. There are, I find there, there are, as I said, there's different, as you said, there's two different types of people. The ones it doesn't seem to affect that much and the ones that it does affect a lot. And, and there are also people that had a long time being fine and then had some sort of traumatic experience. And then it all, it all sort of snowballed from there. Um, what, in your experience of working musicians, what's, what do the people come to you with? What do they say to you? What are their main, uh, complaints or, or or fears yeah well it's it's very different it's it's really you know something that it's very individual let's say you know so some people you know there are different there are psychological um, blockades like memory blockade you know like you forget what's next <laughs> um, and uh, like behavioral uh, um, things like um, Compulsive neurosis, uh, so you start, you know, to, to do some stupid things before the, you go on stage. Like, yeah, yeah. Or it takes, or, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's really very different, but uh, mostly it's heartbeat, it's sweating, it's trembling, uh, it's short breath. So these are, let's say, normal things. So that short breath, but for violinists, it's, it's, uh, it's fingers. What it's about for percussion? Like what, where do they get percussionists? Yeah, well, they have they have mostly uh, uh, muscles uh, convulsions or tensions or, or things like that, you know. So it's it's really when the people come, the first thing is to find out what happens during the the performance, then to find out you know the history of performing and the causes of it or the experiences, you know, with, with the performing. 
and and then you know to un analyze it uh, as you said when you have a real traumatic uh, experience uh, people try to forget it actually you cannot forget it your mind knows your subconscious knows you know so it's much better to talk about it to go through it again you know to analyze what happened and to try to live with that to try to cope with that so and all the methods all the psychological methods uh, uh, working on a stage fright are actually analyzing it first so you have to know what happens and be really aware of what are you doing during the performance or before the performance and is what happens is it possible for you in a in a in a therapy hour therapy is the wrong word word here but in your 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 time with working with the student how do you reconstruct this 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 fear because if someone comes to you and says look i have this problem on stage but it's very difficult to reconstruct it in a room with someone nice like you um so how can you judge who 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 has what problem yeah you can you can you, you just tell them to close their eyes and to you know uh <laughs> put the movie again you know on and and turn the movie what happened how did you feel you know you can do that you if you, yeah. if you focus if if you really concentrate you can do that for sure mm -hmm. you can even really feel you know the same fear that you felt at that, that moment so um this this is something let's say the beginning of the of the therapy <laughs> or or the coaching there are different methods and it's also important uh, what I do I, I try to suggest different methods uh, uh, how to cope with that you know some people uh, for some people it's enough you know this cognitive uh, method like knowing what's going on knowing why does it happen and it all already helps you know some some need some rituals to to relearn you know the rituals before playing before performance and uh, it helps sometimes uh, mostly it helps the relaxation techniques like i i try always with out again out again training or oh, Jack, yeah yeah or uh, feldenkrais or alexander technique uh, or uh, there is a new technique I just learned and I love it. It's wing wave. It's the wing kind of wave. relaxation. Wing wave, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's the kind of relaxation as well. So Ooh. all possible meditations, you know, relaxing, muscle relaxation and things like that. So it's There's important. not a lot of time on the stage, though, to do. I found, I mean, I've done Alexander Technique and done the Autogenes training. Um, for me, I need something in that moment when I'm thinking, oh, 10 bars to go till the that's solo. It. That that That's, that's yes. a tough one. And sorry to tell you, but uh, all musicians want to have a recipe that helps immediately, you know, Ooh. at that moment. Uh, well, the thing you is, guys, all this... Stuff everyone is, out there wants it too, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> True. No, the thing is, um, uh, this is, you know, when you choose the technique that you use and that helps you, that you feel comfortable with, uh, you have to train this. You have to train your body. You have to retrain your body. And this is something, this is the first thing I always say, look, this is something you need to train every day like you practice your instrument, like you practice your scala or scala or, or, or yeah. your technical, yeah. yeah, technical exercise and things like that. Because if you want your body to react in a five minutes before performance, you have to train your body for that. So this is this is the you know this is the clue really to train to be persistent you know to do it uh, How? for a longer time. I'm signing <laughs> up. I'm signing up. How? <laughs> well, first of all, as I say, you have to find a technique that suits you that you feel comfortable with. Um, not everyone is you know comfortable with meditation or I don't know it's, impossible. it's virtually impossible five minutes before performance we are running around I have everyone in the horn room usually on their iPhones but no we're not supposed to say that um, no warming up and um, and and it's just a lot going on and then we go to the stage and we will wait together and it's very loud and, and there's really very little time to just be peaceful yes. 
I, I use very often and I try to teach everybody this uh, Jacobson relaxa muscle relaxation technique. I don't know if, if yeah. you have... I know Jacobson, here. yeah. That, I was going to yeah. say that's the one thing that really has helped. Wing, uh, someone's just asked, Dinka, Steve has just asked Wing Wave, how do we find out about that? Does anyone know out there on the chat? Maybe you can put a put a link well, out there. Well, there is a, there is a German uh, uh, doctor who who started it, and uh, there is a lady I I studied with in in Vienna. Um, it's actually it's a technique that uh, uses you know during the uh, REM phase uh, during the sleep. Yeah. Um, the, yeah, uh, the, uh, the, 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 deep, the deepest deep, uh, form of sleep there is, yeah. Okay, then yeah. your eyes uh, m are moving. Yeah. yeah. So what it's they do rapid, with... The rapid movement, the rapid eye... Eye re movement, that's yeah. a REM, what I call, yeah, R-E-M, yeah? Everyone's trying okay. to do that now. <laughs> yeah, so you, uh, they teach you how to, how to do it, yeah. And actually, your body reacts with the relaxation. You know, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. It works. <laughs> you can do that on really... stage as well, can't you? Well, not really, because people think you've fallen asleep. <laughs> oh, no, better not. <laughs> better not. But you can do it. This is, for example, I, I liked it so much because this is like a Jacobson technique. This is something you can do really quickly just before the performance just to calm down and focus on your exercise, so to say, you know? And you can do it, you know, when everybody is around and you just, you know, focus for, for a minute or two and it helps. Do you know the name of this doctor? That's uh, because I'd like to be able to show all our, our viewers out there. But no. if, you, if you put Wing Wave, it will show you on internet. German, in German, it's Wing Wave. So. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so, so maybe if one of you guys can can Google that and put the put the put put it up on the chat, that'd be fantastic. Otherwise, I'll see what I can do to find out about it, and then and then post about it. Yeah, because um, it sounds to me, Jakobsen is also something that that's very that's a very quick muscle um, tension and letting go. And I, to be honest, if I'm telling a big secret here, I've noticed that on stage I get very tense in my legs just before a solo. Um, you, solo, okay, we don't have that many solos on low horn, but when we do, believe me, they're quite scary. Um, so I noticed that my legs went, went really, really tense, so I, I tried to tense them up and let them go beforehand, go. which means that the tension is gone out of the body, well, as, much, as best as we can. But it's uh, also... Put up, anyway. Thank you, Simon, for putting up the link. Okay, great. So, but this also doesn't help if you do it only on the stage and before the performance. This is something that that could help, but if you train this really regularly every day, because your body has to learn it, you know, this tension and relaxation, yeah. it has to make, you know, the connection between yeah. these two. So yeah. this is something you cannot use, and mostly people use it just before the performance, and they say, well, it doesn't work, <laughs> you know? No, it doesn't work. It doesn't work if you didn't practice it for a longer time before. So this is something you really need to take seriously as an exercise, everyday exercise, you know? Well, I, I, I really hear you because um, it's something I could really do with as well. And I don't want you all groaning out there because it really is true. Believe me, the, the, at a, the higher level you, you play, the worse the fall is. And everyone is very, very aware of you know, what there is to lose, especially if you're making a living out of playing the horn or whatever instrument you do. You've got a lot to lose. So being paralyzed by stage fright is just something we just can't allow ourselves to do. Um, and, and Dink is very right. Um, I, we don't practice it enough. I practice you my horn practice. every day, but I don't practice this. So this is definitely something I'm going to be looking into. Thank you for that. Uh, you know what? It's also, you know, there. in the meantime, there are some psychotherapists working with the musicians. And, uh, well, I, I can tell you uh, I am a psychotherapist, but I was also on a stage. So I know what does it mean. Uh, so it's it's a lot about experience as well, you know. The psychotherapists they know the the theory, you know, Absolutely. and they can they try to teach you, and they don't understand what's what's wrong. Why can why can't you learn it, you know? Uh, I have this. Me, oh, you, you've played it. You've played that really well for three nights. Why on the fourth night you're suddenly terrified? You can't explain it. it. Something yeah, which... you cannot explain. I mean, uh, this is my. You know, I'm I'm really uh, happy about it because I had this experience. You know, so I can react on on 
you know what what you are telling to me i was also playing violin and i was on the stage i worked as a journalist mostly live <laughs> so i know how nervous you are mm -hmm. uh, so th this is something different you know one thing is a theory psych psychological theories and the other is uh, experience with which could be really terrifying i know that you know um veronica has just asked a question is it possible to end stage fright permanently now if i'm allowed no. to yeah i was just about to say do we want to even end no. stage fright no, no, because there are a, a, a really great effects of this anxiety or this fear. Tell For us example, something good about stage fright. Tell us something, something good, good about it. Um, I mean, you are not aware of that, but when when you when you have this adrenaline, you know, coming up, there are certain things that you need as a musician. First thing you need it's you know focus, and you do focus. The other thing is your vision widens, your peripheral vision, peripheral vision. Yep. widens, and you yeah. need it. You need to see your music and the conductor and your colleagues, and that's what you can do only, only if you feel this <gasps> excitement, you know? Mm -hmm. So this is the positive thing about it. <laughs> so we are, and also, you know, this excitement gives this, 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 emotional uh, uh, you know um, feeling that audience feels as well yeah. you know so being just completely cool and relaxed on the stage doesn't bring a good performance no, so I it's agree. so it's it's not you know I always say we don't want to you know get rid of stage fright we want to live with stage fright and to be in control and this is the most important thing that you feel you are under you are in control not you are under control of, of you know of your fear so and you are exposed and you cannot do anything so uh, uh, when you train this when you really exercise uh, something of these methods you know whichever you choose then you train your body and you feel from one performance to the other and from day to day you feel more in control and that's the most important thing. It's not to, you know, get rid of it. It's to be in control. What about the people that have had sort of like a, a, a trauma with all of a sudden being nervous and, and it feels sometimes like spiraling to a black hole. You become more afraid of being afraid and then you're afraid on stage because you're being afraid of being afraid. And in the end, all you're afraid of is being afraid, not afraid yeah. of playing, but you're afraid it's, of this just, bad Yeah, the only thing that, have, that, that helps then it's really to analyze it, you know, then you need a coach, you know, to analyze what happened at that moment, what happened that day, what happened before or during, you know, the performance. So this is the only thing you can do, really go deep inside and analyze what happened. And then go through this, uh, you know, what, what I try to do always to put the person in a, in a relaxed stage with whatever, meditation, out again, training, um, positive uh, pictures in your mind and then go through this the, through this ex bad experience you know in the relaxed stage so this helps this helps but this is really work working on well, it <laughs> someone andrew and he's from england shame on you andrew has just written some people use alcohol we shouldn't even be mentioning alcohol here i definitely would have recommended okay not shame on you good for you for saying that what does what does dinka think well i know what dinka's going to say the same as us you and me it's rubbish <laughs> uh well you know what uh, this is the thing uh, a lot of musicians really uh take alcohol or any drugs I, I know that in the States uh, they use beta blockers uh, as well a lot. Uh, what happens then is uh, it's like you have a healthy body and you are in, and you move around in a wheelchair and you think you cannot walk without wheelchair anymore. Mm -hmm. It's the same with any drug you use. You know, after a while you don't. You know, you didn't do anything on your own. You're you know for yourself. It's only the drug that helps you and you take it and you take it more and more and we know that it, it is dangerous. I mean, it but ruins. But the, the drug can't help you really play better though, can it? Because you play as good as you play. The drugs may just help you take the edge off being so scared, no? 
Yeah, but then you are used to take anything before, something, whatever, yeah. but yeah. you get used to it, but you didn't do anything to be yourself in control of your stage you fright. Control, I'm sure it's a much better feeling to be in control yourself, obviously. Uh, that, that, that is the ideal, the ideal way. Um, I remember Radovan saying if he wasn't nervous when he went on stage, he'd yeah. be worried. Yeah, he says always, if I'm not nervous, then it's a bad performance for sure. That was a bad concert, you know. There was no feeling in it. There was no emotions, you know, nothing. So we are human and, and uh, that's why actually, you know, why people still, although we have internet and YouTube and recordings, people still really love to come to the concert because sure. this you know live experience and this live experience is actually your emotions as as a performer uh you know spreading in this hall to to the audience so no we need it we really do need it you know and if you take some sort of uh, uh drugs for that you know whether they be whatever you take these days i'm sure there's a hundred different things you can take that dampens the, the physical experience that you can have during your concert and that's actually the main reason why I became a musician was because I just love this feeling love of elation it. that I had after a concert and I can't imagine dampening that down maybe with alcohol I, I don't even yeah I, I, I can't speak because I don't think I ever played plastered but uh, um, I'm sure if, if I did I probably think I was great but probably everyone else wouldn't <laughs> yeah. but I it's just can't probably. imagine that you know how we taught our kids not to drink when they party somewhere, you know? We told them, look, it's wonderful to know the next day what happened during the yeah. night. <laughs> so, so, so um, no, you, carry on. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's the same with, with experience on a stage, you know? Uh, it's, it's good to know what happened, you know, to, to really be aware of it. But Even for some people, you. the stage fright can be so crippling that making music becomes uh, something awful for them. And 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 is it? It's very important for me, I think, to get to get back to the love of the music that that you're doing. But how, but that that that's that's not to do with your muscle relaxing, with your with with you know this wing wave or anything. That's more of a mental state you have to get yourself yeah. into about why we're doing this in the first place. That's it, and it's you know it's something. The musicians, they have to be aware, the audience that comes to the concert, okay, they had probably a bad day, you know, the boss was unbearable or, you know, somebody's ill in the family or whatever happened during the day. They come to the concert, they just want to hear something nice. And um, maybe two or three critics sit there or musicians, you know, uh, listening to every note. But the others, the most of people sitting in the audience, they just want to enjoy music. So they are not so critical as you musicians think on the stage, you know. And uh, I, can t I won't tell you which, which uh, pianist it was, but I heard a concert of a great pianist who was obviously not prepared. So he really missed so many notes. <laughs> but, but this was the best. Uh, Beethoven third I ever heard in my life because it was so you know so intense so so full of feelings and emotions and everything I didn't bother you know the missed notes and this is something the musicians have to know also you know what what the audience feel during the performance but I it's I, not I, so I, must say, I totally agree with that but if in a professional orchestra we often are more worried about what our colleagues will think in as a student you're often more worried about this, what what your fellow students will think than what the audience can think and that can be a bigger pressure for someone than than what what the audience is going to say also in an audition situation um, you know that there are real professionals out there, and we you you only have like as a musician you have one chance to get it right, um, and that puts that 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 also puts you under a huge amount of pressure. So you have to it's all very well getting the body relaxed, but the brain has to be um, in a state of focus and and, and not That's panic. It, yeah, for sure. And and these are this you know like mental techniques you know that yeah. you learn you know how to switch off your you know <laughs> everything that goes on and and this and this is also. Mm -hmm. What techniques do you use with people for that? I mean, because I, I mean, we we know the inner game of music and uh, performance yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. 
Yeah. How do you get people back into a state of control with their brain? It's, a, it's, you know, uh, I told you also about that. It's not, uh, uh, you have to avoid telling lies to yourself. Like, I'm calm. I'm, that's really, I, I use that on stage today, Dinka. I thought of you. Yeah. Please, tell, please tell everyone what we talked about the other day, because I thought that was really fascinating. Yeah, because, you know, uh, there is this, you know, technique of positive thinking, positive auto-suggestions. Yeah. And uh, people use it, and they can do more harm than, 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 you know, something good about it. Because your subconscious knows that this is a lie. If you are trying to tell yourself, I'm relaxed, I'm fine, I'm perfect, I'm good, uh, and your subconscious says, no, it's a lie, I know, I know I'm nervous, you know, then, then what, what subconscious does she tries to to higher the level of your uh, nervousness and your body reactions and that's terrible actually what happens then so uh, the thing is if positive suggestions then the ones that are not a lie so something that you really think positive like i don't know if you know that you are good prepared then i'm good prepared for you know this what i said today to myself on stage i said I said, I am so happy and proud to be here on this stage playing with these musicians. But I, I was so busy being happy and proud that I was there that I forgot to be nervous about the hard bit. So I really, hey, you guys, it really works. <laughs> it works. No, it works because it's a true, you know. Something, it's always positive on, on, on stage, you know. Like you say, being proud to, you know, play with these colleagues, being happy to be on this great stage, you know being happy about the fee or the supper you have after that with your colleagues or, you know, whatever. But when you give you yourself, you know, some positive suggestion, it has to be true. It has to be something that you really think because everything else just causes, you know, suffering goes, goes up. So it's, it's no good. Yeah. Okay. So, so say, let's try this then on stage. Next time we're really nervous, try and think of something positive about the situation we're in yeah. and say that to ourselves and that has a calming effect? It on, has on a calming you? effect because, you know, you say the truth. You, you say the truth. Like, I'm, I'm so happy that, I don't know, that audience is so full today, you know, so they like to hear us yeah. <laughs> or whatever. Uh, and when you start to think something that is, first of all, true, and secondly, positive, it calms your mind down, that's for mm -hmm. sure, you know. You can even, you know, make it as a mantra and repeat the sentence, you know, really, like, a <laughs> hundred times if you need to. Uh, but when you repeat it, it calms you down, you know. Mm -hmm. It's it's positive, it's truth, it's really important that it's truth. <laughs> so it calms you down, you know because you are talking to yourself something really positive yeah great so tip. thank you i really appreciate that tip and um you know i'd be interested to know if any of you try that out there that uh, if that works for you let's get to some questions if we may because um they're coming in fast and furious um margarita says she's very nervous when it comes to playing single note or to audition um sometimes taking beta blockers but her biggest problem is that the nerves because her mouth becomes dry and and that it's very hard to control i know the mouth getting the mouth dry um uh some people say if you take beta blockers your mouth gets dry anyway but the point of all this is to get us off all these things and get us uh doing it without any help from outside influences so how mm -hmm. can we if if we think our mouth is going to get dry um is there any any trick that we can use against that i mean this oh. is a very if you if you think if you think your mouth will be dry, it will be for sure. <laughs> so, <is> right now, <laughs> yeah. So it's it's also when I work with a Jacobson relaxation technique, I always uh, teach them, and that's what the people when you know when when they are not coached, what they do, they try to relax the muscles they need, and this is wrong huh. because then you focus on the muscles you need, and they they are tense immediately. So okay. uh, so when you do Jacobson relaxation technique, you do it with all muscles you don't need. Your okay. foot, for example, your knees, uh, your, I don't know, uh, you do need your uh, muscles here. You but need something most things to play. Yeah, yeah. So things. when you do, yeah. So yeah. when you do it, when you do it, just do with the muscles that you don't need. Okay. Immediately, 
you focus on other parts of your body and your focus is off the parts of your body and the muscles that you need for your playing. Okay. And this is already something helping you to, to relax these muscles. Okay, okay? so if, if someone's suffering from a dry mouth, for example, they should try and relax their ears or something and not think about getting them out. And, as you far can as possible. Them. As yeah. far as possible. So your, possible. Your, feet, feet. your feet, your um, um, hands, and things okay. like that. As My far as possible. Try and relax your feet next time you have a dry mouth. Okay? <laughs> I mean, it, it, it sounds very funny, but it's really true, you know? Okay. Um, there's some other things coming in. When we encounter, Sean asks, when we encounter bad anxiety, anxiety on stage, especially before an important part in the orchestra, like one bar before the solo in Tchaikovsky 5, how can we use it to our advantage in that moment? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I know what, what does it mean a horn player in the orchestra, especially solo horn. So it's like, you know... Uh, I, must say, I, I must say, anybody who knows Radovan just cannot believe that this peaceful, secure, amazing guy ever gets nervous in his life. But, you know, oh, we're, yes, all, no, yes. we're all... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For sure, and that's good. <laughs> but I know what does it mean. It means like counting the bars before and then you have to come there with two notes which have yeah. to be perfect, yeah. yeah? And and this is, you know, and then, you know, your nervousness rises and and then exactly at the moment when this note has to come out, uh, yeah. you are blocked completely. Um, the, the trick is, what can help is to, uh, to anticipate uh, these notes before. So to have them in your, um, in your ear or in your mind before. So trying to ignore the orchestra playing the bars before and trying to visualize actually or, you know, the, the note you have to play. Just anticipate this note before. It's, it's trying to give yourself something different to think of. Is that right? Rather than, oh, it's yeah. coming, it's coming. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and maybe just to think of the color, uh, just try to imagine, I mean, uh, these notes or, or this phrase that you have to play in some color. Mm. Or is it soft? Is it, is it warm? Is it sharp? Uh, so to think about this note uh, in, a, in some, you know, picture, let's say a picture, mm -hmm. you know, with colors, with the edges or not edges, you know. Uh, round or echoing. <laughs> so, so to visualize this note, and then you, then you start, you know, then you don't think anymore. Oh, it's coming, <laughs> you know. It's hard, it's, the problem is, it's hard to practice this because this rarely happens when you're practicing. I mean, at home we're great, and then you get on the stage, and so the only time we can really practice is it, it, in rehearsals. Okay, that's fine. In a concert. It's hard to practice because if it goes wrong, then well, you know, you, have it's, to it's, the you can no, no, sir, you can practice it. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's what I said. Visualizing the notes that you have to play, you can do it at home also before any even technical exercise or whatever. Try to do this exercise to visualize the note. How do you want it to sound? You know, does it loud? Does it very you know? spread or focus or whatever but trying to visualize this note you can practice this even at home you know before any any note you blow <laughs> you know um, and and this happens then at the concert and you know already what you are doing you okay, know so it's also like a little routine like a, a sort of mantra it's also a little yeah. practice routine that you've built up for yourself along with the relaxation that's yes. a very good tip. My friend Jasper Rees has just joined us from London. Hello, Jasper. Um, and he wanted to ask something that I find very important. How do you shut down all these voices in your head? Um, the voices that come to you just before a solo and say, oh, you're going to mess, mess up or oh, you're going to do, do this. Okay. I know exactly what he means. I, I usually have about six or seven of them going on at the same time. <laughs> That's again, I, I, I cannot say how important it is to practice the mental techniques, uh, mm -hmm. to practice it. So to have a voice that you uh, control and make, to make it louder than the other voices, so to say. You know what I mean? 
So to practice some words, some sentences, some pictures, uh, that after a while, when you practice it, they are louder than the voices you hear. So and you really think that's possible? You re you think it's really possible to get that done? It that get is, that? It is. It is. But Promise it's. Me. <laughs> uh, well, if I ask you, did you play your um, I don't know Mozart concerto immediately after two uh, exercises or two uh, lessons? You didn't. No. <laughs> so so it's the same. So you needed your years and years of practice uh, horn and and your instrument, and you think this is normal. I have to practice first two th tones and then three and four. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then one day I will play a Mozart concerto, and uh, it, it's the same. Unfortunately, it's the same with the mental techniques. You need to practice them for a while. Mm -hmm. It's not something you can use immediately. I cannot give a recipe <laughs> for yeah. immediately. No, no, of course. We're all we're yeah. all watching you online. There are all these people and and hoping you're going to be the guru to solve all our problems. I must say it's absolutely fascinating talk, talking to you. And um, um, what I think we should do is maybe do something like this on a regular basis online for people um, you know who really struggle. Do you you probably also give classes. Um, you know, one classes. on one. I do give yeah. workshops. Workshops help a lot. I mean, then, we have then to get I... you. But you live in Salzburg, so we have to get you set up with an online um, workshop so that people can workshops. sign up for a Skype yeah. lesson or something. Because well, it's I, 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 want to about this. I know. I intend to have my website uh, from January and uh, and do really exercises or coaching uh, on Skype. I didn't try that before, but I heard it. You know, there are some people doing it. I'll try to do it. <laughs> and, well, as soon as you do, people. as soon as you do, let me know, and I'll make sure that all all my friends out there in Hornland um, yeah, yeah. Can, um, can know about this because uh, I think I'm going to be calling you up secretly without everyone watching. Um, <laughs> okay, <no problem>. <laughs> <laughs> to find out more about these tips. Um, people have been writing all sorts of things. Meditation is extremely useful. To everyone's giving their own tips here, which I think is great. Uh, meditation is extremely useful. It's hard for me. To, I find it's hard to find a really peaceful place before a concert to do this in. But I mean, it's it, it's good. Um, uh, 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 what else do we have? Oh, Kendall Gray, Bud Herseth, who's a legendary principal trumpet of the Chicago Symphony, said he when asked about what he thought about being on stage, he said he imagined when he was in his basement at home when he was on stage at the symphony hall. But when he was at home practicing, he imagined that he was in the symphony hall. So on a I stage. Guess was, That's it. Yeah. That's it. Well, this um, imagination and this, you know, pictures in our brain, that helps a lot. That really helps yeah. a lot. But you also have to learn to evoke, uh, evoke them when you need them, you know. And it's also a lot of humor and fun helps, you know. The enemies of stage fright, uh, humor and fun, you know, so, uh, you know, the feeling of having fun, you know, and, you know, joy uh, about playing as well. And a lot of humor, you know, I, I had the people who enjoyed that. And, and that's, that's what I say. It's very individual, you know, everybody has to find his way to, to cope with that and to control it. Mm -hmm. Uh, there, are, uh, I taught, uh, I, I taught a musician who is, uh, only on stage he is very serious, but but normally he is a very funny person, you know, with a lot of humor. And I said, look, could you imagine that your audience they, that they are all sitting on a loo, you know, and <laughs> and and uh, you know, and you help them, you know, because they have stomach ache, and you know, and you help them with your music. And he said it was wonderful. He came out on the stage laughing every time, you know, <laughs> and and feeling, you know, and feeling more relaxed about it. So, uh, so what you're yeah. saying is everybody is individual, and everybody needs to find that there's no one secret. Yeah. To this yeah. and it's like it's like any sort of teaching when I go somewhere and just because I say something's good for one person it doesn't mean it's good for everybody so I think I think the best thing we can take out of this all of us is that um, is that we take every bit of what what Dinka says or what Jeff Nelson says or whatever helps mm -hmm. us and uses that everyone should make up their own palette yeah. of, um, of of tips and, and things but yeah. one thing I really think is important that we're taking away from today is that we have to practice it we can't just expect yeah. stage fright just to go away and leave us alone we really need to practice we need to 
I, I love this that that stage that humor and fun are, is the enemy of stage yeah. fright. I love that. I love that already. Um, and in my section, we have a lot of fun. So obviously, we're doing we're doing something good against stage fright. You're doing the best thing you can. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But, but we'll take that away, and we'll take away that that we need to practice it. And um, and I I think we need to get you back because when I was studying, nobody talked about this. This was like a big taboo subject. Nobody wanted to talk. And I have the feeling that even just talking about this, maybe even just going yes. out online and talking about yes. this in public, it might make people think feel like they're not alone, you know, yeah. with this. You know, like, have... uh, actually, I learned a lot from the sports uh, uh, man, you know, because there is more money in a sports than in a music. So yeah. they started they started earlier, you know, to work on a mental preparation of the sportsman. Uh, and I learned actually a lot from them because they, you know, they analyze, they, they, they have all possible ideas and techniques how to work uh, 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 in a sport because they have a stage fright as well as you do course, before yeah. a competition and things like that. And it's even terrible for them, you know, if they block. So, so uh, uh, this is really uh, important. And, uh, and they know a lot about it. And actually, the musicians, until recently, they didn't talk about it. Everybody was ashamed to have a stage fright. And this was something everybody, you know, had to cope uh, alone with that and, and thought, actually, I'm not good enough or I'm not prepared enough. Yeah. And, and, and this is the first problem, actually. The first problem that you talking about it and knowing that everybody feels the, something you know uh, it helps already you know there are a lot of people who are already relaxed when they know oh this is normal oh okay <laughs> you know I can yeah. cope with that if this is normal you know yeah. so this is this no. is really important, well you know? that's what we that's what we've done today and I really hope yeah. that it's helped all of you out there I'm sorry I didn't get to everybody's questions but um, Dinka will have her her website up in January I hope <laughs> And uh, and I really hope that you'll be part of our big online uh, uh, brass explosion in, in connecting everybody. And um, just I can't thank you enough, Radovan. If you're still watching, you have the most amazing wife. Oh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you so much for coming on. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I'm really glad. We'll see you yeah. again. And to everybody out there, I've just had some. I hope you really enjoyed that as much as I have. Thank you for joining us. I've had some great news today. On Monday, we have a special guest, Myron Bloom who's in Indiana, um, Jeff Nelson is going to get him into his studio for an interview with him. So that is an incredible honor. So I hope you guys can join us on Monday. And uh, until then, thank you very much. Good night to Tim in Melbourne, who stayed up again really, really late to do this live stream for us. So good night, Tim. Bye, Dinka, to Salzburg. And see Bye. you guys very soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you.